Bro, the hot dog in the hallway. <laughs> Whoa. Hello. I don't know what the fuck that was. <laughs> this is our second podcast. Second. We decided the first one was so successful. Oh, yeah. What does it have? Like no. two views? <laughs> Maybe. No, I thought it was just fun. I wanted to be doing no, I, I, do I, I, en- I enjoy blabbing on about nothing. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, nobody listens to me. So, uh, in real yeah. life. <laughs> so I've decided to give them a chance to listen to me in the fake life of the internet world. Oh, okay. What did you say? Yes. What was that? <laughs> <laughs> so if you'll excuse us, we've decided to make ourselves noodles. Yummy. So we're going to be eating them. Yummy. Or eating noodles because I'm poor. Freaking noodles. And I don't get paid till midnight tonight, which is irrelevant to anyone who watches this after tonight. But just so you know. Just so you know. I won't be annoying at all. No, I only maybe a little bit. Um, <laughs> so, it is almost the uh, harvest season. The harvest season. The harvest moon season. I wonder what harvest moon is. I was about to say, isn't that a game? <laughs> So, Dakota. Yes. What sort of plans do you have for the upcoming season? Of the harvest? Of the harvest sort. I don't know. <laughs> you don't have any plans? Not in particular. Okay, do you me. have any things you would like to do but you haven't planned for yet? Uh corn maze. Oh, <laughs> Pretty right. sure. I kind of want to go to Cornace. Putting Sounds fun. Putting ideas in your head. <laughs> you gotta go to Corn Maze, bitch. You gotta go to the fucking Corn Maze, whether you like it or not. Oh my dead body, you're gonna go to the fucking Corn Maze. Noodles. But yes, I enjoy the Corn Maze. It's fun. It's sweet. Um, a couple years ago, and we'll put up a picture of what I'm about to talk about, but a couple years ago, I went to a corn maze with um, Chance and Nick, and I did their makeup because they wanted me to do their makeup. So I was like, okay, why not? And this was back when Chance had like really long Long hair. hair. Yeah, so he was able to do a Jeff the Killer costume, Mm -hmm. and Nick was, um, um, oh my god, Kiss. (laughs) Or fucking lead singer from Kiss. Lead singer. Don't you mean, it's... Gene Simmons isn't the lead singer, but no, Gene not, no, no, oh, it's not the lead singer. Yeah, I don't fucking know his name. <laughs> Everyone only knows Gene Simmons. Everyone, yeah, but it's just because he has a tongue that'll literally lick your cervix. But that's beside the point. <laughs> lick that baby. <laughs> that's cool. Lick that baby inside <laughs> of me. Come here, fetus. Maybe it was Gene Simmons that he was doing. I don't know. I think it was Gene. Simmons. I'd have to look at the pictures again to to tell. But anyways. So we did that, and we were just walking around the corn maze, having a good time. And I was shooting videos just to see how camera angles would work in a corn maze, because I wanted to shoot like a skit. Fine. Chance, turn around. Chance. I can't even see you. (laughs) You can just see your light. Oh, you're... Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> Don't fall into the corn, man. Say hi, Nick. Hey, Nick. <laughs> Fuck, dude. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right, Nick. That's right. <laughs> 
What would you just right. like? That's you right. saw. That's just a body and like a bunch of blood. Uh, I'd, yeah. I'd run. Um, I'd run my dick off. I just continue. <laughs> it's like, it's like kind of a good one. And then the next day, I should know this way. This way. Like, good one, murderer. <laughs> or like, the, the next morning, like your mom calls you and you're like, which one did you go to last night? And then you say this one and she's like, there was a murderer there. Uh, and then you call me. I'm like, oh, that's really cool. <laughs> oh, that's a <laughs> the late, like the recent, like creepy pasta at the time. Mm-hmm. That that was one of the big ones at the time. Mm-hmm. Like creepy pasta had just become like a mainstream thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I learned about creepy pastas uh, because I was on Facebook and my friend posted a picture of, of Slender Man, and I was and it was like a picture of Slender Man standing in like the doorway to your bedroom. And then it had the caption, like, what would you do if you saw this in the middle of the night? And I was like, what the fuck is this? So I clicked on it, and then all the comments below it were like, Slender Man, oh my god, Slender Man, this is such a good picture. I'm like, who the flying fuck is Slender Man? So I looked him up, and that's how I found the amazing world of spooky spaghetti. Spooky spaghetti. <laughs> Creepy, but it's not even that scary. No, I don't, because I think people aren't but, doing it right. The, the thing is, they live up to their name. They're creepy. They're not scary to the point where I'm not going to be able to sleep at night after reading one, but they're creepy. If you read them in the right atmosphere, you know. Like, I think the problem with them, that I have with them, is that they're trying too hard to make the person scared mm-hmm. rather than setting up like an environment in which... the because you can't be scared by the book. You just can't be scared by text, you know? Mm-hmm. So I think it need, more needs to, like, set up an environment which you fear for the character in the story. Okay. I can see that. I think that would make it a lot more scarier because it's suspenseful and you, like, give a shit. Yeah. So, like, when you, when, you, when you care about the characters and they become real to you, then the danger that they're facing becomes real to you. And that's what scares you because you realize that that could happen to me. Like scare, scare the characters and not the audience is what I think you should do when you're writing your creepy pasta. Right. Like a good one is um. And I feel like they sort of do that, but like it's not like it's in the story in the context of the story. Yes, it is directed towards the character, but like as far as the actual story goes, it's like hey, check it out. There's bloody blood everywhere. Mm-hmm. It's not. A good one is 1999. Yeah, yeah. I like that one, one because it's it's uh, it's like a giant flashback, which turns into present hauntings. You know? Yeah. I think it's really good. Excuse my couch; it's super fucking. Because because it sets up the characters, and you become invested in the characters. So when the character is like. Holy shit, I think I'm being stalked by the very person I feared as a child, you know, for whatever reason. Then it's like, oh fuck. <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of wanted to write like a banjo because you make creepy pasta. Like, about when you fail to uh, stop your tell that and like 2D becomes an ugly like, beast. I feel like I want to write one where she's like taking revenge on Banjo for not saving her or something. And then like rips his asshole out. Yeah. <laughs> I, I kind of want to do something like that. That'd like, be cool. Yeah, I, I think don't that'd know. Be a pretty interesting one. I don't know how I feel about the whole video game creepy pastas. I don't think. Yeah, I feel. Yeah, you know, I. I and anyway, Sonic.exe is just so fucking dumb. I don't, I don't understand how everybody's like, ooh, Sonic.exe. I saw it. I was like, what am I? What is this? It's so who lame. made this? It's so <laughs> lame. But check it out. He has hyper realistic red eyes. Whoop-de-whoop. Whatever the fuck hyper realistic means. My brother has hyper realistic red eyes when he's high. <laughs> what do you fucking do? Because <laughs> if you can get more real than real, I don't know. That's why I, I, I really like creepy pastas that are like make it seem like they're based on urban legend. And it gives it history and it gives it depth mm-hmm. and the possibility that maybe it's real. Of course, Slenderman isn't real because everyone knows the origins of Slenderman was yeah. you know, an internet contest. Yeah. 
after I think it was like they came out with Saw. I think it was the first Saw. No, it wasn't the first Saw because I was pretty young when that came out. It must have been like the third or fourth. And some like famous internet site was like, "All right, we're gonna give it to the fans. Come up with some sort of evil creature, give it backstory, and then post pictures of it and make it seem real." And that's how Slenderman was born. Yeah, and that's how Slenderman was born. And 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 there have been girls that have killed someone to please the Dark Lord Slenderman. Because they're fucking stupid. <laughs> Actually, they almost... Wait, unless there was I, another stabbing, I, I they think, almost killed her. But she was... She really? was I thought they killed her. They almost did. She managed to crawl away and make it to a street where somebody found her. And so, yeah. Because they're t- three edgy, five you... Like seeing kid like e- middle school emo. Uh, they like, were they were young, man. They were yeah. like twelve, I think. Yeah. Like yeah, kind of darkness. One of them definitely has a mental disorder, but the I, other one was just kind of like the follower. Like, oh, she's the leader. I got a follower, mm-hmm. and she told me to stab this person, and I don't want to lose my friendship with her, so I'm going to stab this person, <laughs> which she admitted later um, in the jail. If you, if you were like, if you came up to me and like, hey Dakota, I, I need you to stab somebody, and you're like, uh, I don't. I'm Dakota, not sure if, if you me. came up to me and told me that I needed to stab somebody, one, I would think you're joking. <laughs> Two, I'd probably like kick you in the balls because it's fun. Because <laughs> it's fun. And three, you can just get the pencil paper stick. If you actually proved to me that you wanted me to stab <laughs> somebody for real, I would kick you in the balls again. <laughs> If if you came up to me and I legitimately thought like you want me to stab someone, I'd be like, ah, I'm not sure if I kind of like want to be around you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. That would be most You're a little weird now. <laughs> you know, all these, these past five years, they, they kind of they went kind of were in vain. Now. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, so just the other day too, I was at work. We're, by the way, we're probably going to be focusing on creepy stuff for the whole podcast. Creepy stuff. Well, like fucking the word hot dogs is overlaid on the video. <laughs> oh, yeah. You will you know why it's there. <coughs> don't pretend like you don't know because you do know. And if you don't know, go back to the beginning of this video. Watch it again, you dickhead. You douche. Douche. There's no way they didn't see it. I'm going to laugh if me. my mom watches our podcast. <laughs> my mom's going to slap me. <laughs> That'd be so funny. Anyways, I was at work the other day, and um, I was cleaning up a building I don't normally clean up, and I was just doing my thing, and there is this closet that's normally closed, but it was left open that day for whatever reason, and I walk in, and I see these creepy... We'll put up a picture of them, but it just here. I'm gonna show Dakota right now, and you'll okay. see them. We'll put them up on the screen. You for do you. it. So, anyways, I freaking I, I, I that <laughs> that. Oh yeah, I saw that on Facebook. Oh, those are fucking weird. They were so creepy, <laughs> and they was were, it in like a dark spot? Well, the cl- like the closet didn't have light. I turned on my and this and that was pretty creepy. If it was like a poorly like lit area. Like, it kind of was. It's a weird building. It's not not used very often. So yeah, I saw those and I was like, nope. <laughs> but I, I took pictures because you know why not? Hi there. <sighs> well, I'm gonna murder your family. <laughs> well, I have a dead baby inside of me. <laughs> I like how the one next to it is like. He's like, <laughs> he's he's like, like bruh. bruh. <laughs> But that's the thing. That's how their eyes were positioned. So when you like walk in, watch, they're just when you're walking, they're you. staring <laughs> dead at you, and it's like, oh, oh. No. Um, Even the one in the corner, look, you see, his pupil is turned to you. Like, that's super. That looks like Five Nights at Freddy's, honestly. Yeah, and that guy, like when it's grungy and not smooth, when animatronics are not smooth and they're grungy and they're old looking, like animatronics in the nineties. That shit scares me. It's creepy. I don't go to a Chuck E. Cheese. Which is which is why I didn't <laughs> like Five Nights at Freddy's too, because mm-hmm. they smoothed out all the puppets. They gave them a nicer look and a nicer tone. 
Too much polish. It was yeah, exactly. Too much polish. And I tried to bring it back in the third one, which could have been better. They tried to bring back the grungy look, but it didn't work. But but what are you gonna do? But but it's like if you walked into a freaking Chuggy e. Cheese at two o'clock in the morning back in the nineties and you saw the freaking like Chuck E. Cheese costume sitting in the chair staring at you. No, that's a no. No, you burn that Chuck E. Cheese <laughs> to the ground. You piss on. You piss on it after it's burned. Yep. That's you, exactly what you do. You desecrate it. You do. I love noodles. Noodles. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, noodle break. What else were we going <laughs> to talk about? Noodles. I've been talking a lot. Yeah, you have. I've noticed. I've been like barely talking at all. I'm going to let you talk now. I'm let gonna, me talk. I'm going to uh, eat my noodles. What is there to talk about? More creepy stuff. More creepy stuff. Uh, mm. uh, we should also upload the videos while we're doing this. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Oh, my laptop. Okay. I'll do that. Also, while we talk. And touch ourselves. Okay. I mean, um, I don't uh, like to talk about it. I didn't say that. <laughs> um, talk about what scares you. What scares me? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Dying of lo- dying lonely. That's scary. We all die alone, Dakota. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's okay, child. We all die alone. Like in the context, like like in an actual like phobic context rather than oh like, okay so like if you were trapped in a collapsed building no no no. i mean like i mean like should i tell it tell something that i'm scared of in an actual like phobic context or like in a, like a psychological i don't know a little bit of both a little bit of both start with the phobic um phobic i hate spiders okay and there's no creepy crawly i just want to not ever see one again <laughs> What about them scares me? The the way they move their fucking legs. It's so like. <laughs> <laughs> it was... What about tarantulas? Tarantulas they move slowly. Um, I'm it's... not because they're kind of furry. Not that. Not that scary. Yeah. Okay. I get that a lot. A lot of people think that. Uh. Years me. Um, hmm. <laughs> I think it's funny when, because <laughs> my girlfriend will text me, I need to talk to you. I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, no, that's. Yeah, and it'll be like nothing. <laughs> you need to talk to you. Okay, what's up? What's up, Vic? <laughs> <laughs> Morty, Morty, I'm breaking up with you, Morty. <laughs> Oh, man, Rick. Oh, I thought we really had something special, Rick. <laughs> nope, Marty, it was all you. I did a video. I don't I don't know if you remember this. I posted it on Facebook. I did a video. I think it was the same year with the whole Chance and the Corn Maze thing. Mm-hmm. And I asked everyone, I mean, all my friends on Facebook, what really makes you scared? I don't know if you ever saw that video. I I think I like watched it. I was like, yeah. too long. Didn't watch. <laughs> Damn it, TLDW. All I, all I basically said was, "What really makes you scared?" I want to know what you guys have to say. And then I gave an example, like, "What would freak me out is if I was walking home in the middle of the night and it was raining, and there was a fucking guy standing down the street in the middle of the street with a clown mask on, with a bloody knife. <laughs> oh my God. That would scare That's, me. You know what would scare me?" Is if it was like pitch black in here, I'm just coming home from like work or school or something, and I open the door, and there's like a figure standing across oh, the room. That would scare me. Okay. That would scare me a lot. If it was just like almost like just eyes you can see. Oh. That would freak me out. That would freak me out. Just have like a vision. Like, Ooh. That'd give me the creeps. For me, eyes. Like, the eyes of something is a big thing for me when it comes from, like, when I'm so scared like menacing of eyes? Yeah. Yeah. A good example is 
in Scooby Doo. The original, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was scared of a Scooby Doo. No. When I first watched Jurassic Park when I was a kid, the Velociraptors really scared me. Not because they were smart, but because of how they designed the eyes and like the original mm-hmm. animatronics. They were huge and bloodshot and mm-hmm. just, they looked murderous. Uh-huh. They didn't look like animal eyes. They looked like demon eyes. Mm-hmm. You know what really scared me as a kid? What? There was an episode of Rugrats where like Tommy like, falls down or something and he like gets cut on like a bush or something Uh and then like he dreams about it later he like compares him bleeding to like his stuffed bear in his dream i guess so he it happens again in his dream but this time like a bunch of like stuffing is coming out of him oh this is really fucking great it really fucking like got to me that's a a fever that's fever dream shit yeah (laughs) it was so I wonder if I can find a clip of that because I totally want to. Um, so I do want to go to a porn movie again this year. The problem is, is I can't dress Nick up. Or sorry, not Nick. Chance. I dressed the killer again because he cut his hair and his hair is shorter. <sighs> so I don't know. Maybe I'll actually film that video this year with the camera I don't own. Well, who knows? Who knows? Dakota's. I'm trying to find it. He's looking up stuffing Timmy Pickle, Tommy Pickles. Uh, I mean, Tommy Pickles stuffed. <laughs> <laughs> first cut I think did I tell you about I think that's the name of the episode what are you telling what are you saying um, Willy Wanker and the fudge packing factory <laughs> what the fuck okay god I just have not shut up this whole podcast anyways I used to work with Sydney at, at a job together we would we're working for this guy putting stuff up on eBay for him. Um, so we, and me and Sydney are obviously a, a couple of goofballs. So we would just sit there while we were working. Because all we do is post stuff on eBay from our laptop. So we just sat next to each other the whole time and talked about stupid stuff. And then we somehow got into the discussion of like, porn, like, parody movie pornos. Like, they take, like, huge name movies and they do a parody of it. Uh Uh-huh. And so we were just talking about that, and I was like, okay, we should come up with one and then see if it exists. And so I was like, Willy Wanker and the Fudge Packing Factory. (laughs) And it is a real porn. (laughs) It exists. And we... That really shows how much thought goes into the names of porno. (laughs) We flipped our shenanigans. I would have lost my shit. There's okay. There's a porn of the of Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. I think I've seen. Where it. Blue like fucks Frankie, and he has like two dicks. <laughs> it's so funny. It was so fucking funny. Oh, uh, those are those just make me laugh. I'm like, who has this much free time? Who who does? Why are you talking like that? I don't like the way I speak. I'm gonna talk like this for the rest of the time. I'm gonna talk like this, Morty. <sighs> What's another thing we were talking about? Oh, urban legends. Urban, urban legends. legends. Call like Colorado urban legends. Um, there's a there's a couple of them. The one that comes to mind off the top of my head is the whole um, swastika tunnels that are underneath BIA, apparently. (laughs) Wow. I don't know if this is true or not. Um, I researched it a long time ago, and I don't remember what it said. But, yeah, apparently there's 
like tunnels dug in the shape of a swastika and they DIA. Wow. Which is weird. Um, another. Let me think. It's not. This one isn't an urban. Er, er, eh. This one isn't really an urban legend because it is kind of true. But there's tunnels underneath, like down downtown Denver. Obviously, there's a sewage system. Oh my God! He's showing me the video. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? That always fucking freaked me out. Yeah, I'm showing him the Tommy oh the uh, episode of Rugrats. <laughs> <laughs> wow <laughs> oh that it's is so creepy. creepy it creeped me out <laughs> it really okay I'll put I'll put a link to it and play it with volume now um, that was nuts where is it man the rug man the rug rats. did you hear the theory about the rug rats uh, I think I forgot it, but I heard it, but I forgot what it was about. Like how they're all dead or something. How it, like they're all like pigments of Angelica's oh, okay. because she suffers from a bunch of mental disorders. Yeah, yeah, no, I get it. It's playing distorted music. <laughs> oh, that's crazy! That's so fun. It's <laughs> so fucking fucked up. Alright, yeah, I'll I'll put a link to that. Wow. Oh, you should look up um Urban Legends. Urban Legends? Like Colorado. Colorado the ones from Colorado. Yeah. Because I'm not too familiar on them. But it'd be interesting to see what kind of History we have. Five Colorado urban legends that will give you nightmares. But better give me nightmares. Better. Better make me think about my existence. What? <laughs> We're getting all existential here. Yep. Okay. Better make me think from where I live in. The tall rusted iron gates let the Okay, the gates of hell. The tall rusted iron gates let the curious know they are right in the right spot. Not an adventure for the fearful. The gates of hell near the Riverdale Road in Thornton, Colorado. There's a place thrill seekers only visit, dare visit in groups. Some complete with holographic waters and water and Bibles. It's a place where legends speak of satanic worship, murders, sacrifice, and lady in white who roams the nearby road, forever searching for her way home. That doesn't sound like every other horror story ever. <laughs> they come to the burned uh, ruins of Great Mansion. The haunted trunk of a tree scarred from fire and terrifying dark and musty room hidden underground. I was courageous enough to travel through the gates come upon the ruins of, of the old mansion. It is said the man that built it lost his mind. One night he set the entire mansion ablaze with his wife and children to sleep inside before he disappeared, never to be held accountable. Muffled screams can be heard echoing against these now crumbled walls that bear witness to the unspeakable crime. It is the lady in the white that walks the road, the lost spirit of the woman that died at her husband's hands in this place? Is she still trying to escape the fire, looking for murdered children? <laughs> so people stop to offer her help when they see her. She silently continues on her path, eyes full and never turning. The good Samaritan will continue driving down the road, only to look in the rear view mirror to see that she is gone. Huh. Okay, that let's sounds, tell this. Yeah, it sounds like every single one ever. Really? You don't think that's a little bit interesting? It sounds like um, La Llorona. That's true. Well, yeah. Except for, you know, she drowned her own children. But, you know. The Ridge Home. Growing up in Denver, uh, it was right of privilege to break this man and go around the state homes for mental defectives. Commonly known as Ridge Home started construction in 1909 from Maryland to. House and mentally disabled but in late early 1900s conditions were to warehouse what they called undesirables such as mentally disabled the insane and kids whose parents just didn't want them 
Which home has been leveled to merely a field and a supercharger that was built over the location, but is still generating stories of the paranormal. Before the building was... Uh, was... <laughs> Ever. That's a typo. Was demolished. People reported the lights turning on, shadows, voices, and moving objects that is now in the building. That now the building is gone, there are only reports of shadows and voices. I'm curious as to whether or not new owners of the shops have any experience themselves. Do you have any experiences at the Ridge Home before it was torn down? That sucks. It's gone. It's gone. Yeah, we should go to that Target there. Yeah, let's go shopping at the Target. Yeah, I like Target, man. I would go to Target again. I'm down. Why not? Target has a good supply in Nintendo Pre. Does it? Yeah, or like, they're usually like the place, like, the new. Way to hit the microphone. They're like usually a place if like a new like 3DS game comes out, you know, I'd go over there to like check it out. God damn it, my phone restarted. Damn it. Riverdale Road. <laughs> Twisted cottonwood trees resembling deformed streets century line in the spooky road. Where there is a tale of a fan Camaro and a ghost dressed in white. The driver had no idea that the eerie driver the eerie street of Riverdale Road turned out to be uh, drive of death. Legend has it that if you travel this road on light, late night jaunts, you'll see a Camaro with only one working headlight. There's also reports of a girl in a white dress who walks down this road. That's like from the story before. So yeah. Uh, the Ghost of Jogger, Jogger's Hill. You read this one, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> okay, I like to read, so that's okay. I, can't, I don't like reading out loud because it's like, there's a horrific tale of a jogger who was accidentally hit by a car at the crest of his Denver hill. The driver of the automobile drove off and left the jogger to die alone on the hill. This spooky ghost story is a tale of that jogger's shadowy, shadowy specter, which aggressively looms over this area. People who have come late at night to enjoy the view on top of the hill have reported violent beatings on their cars and handprints on the windows. The legend comes with a warning. If the ghost of the jogger ever comes to the driver's side of the vehicle, it will kill you. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh-huh. Let's go to Jogger's Hill. I wonder how, where that is. Uh, normal stories, Colorado. I like to read. Reading. Read. Reading is fun. Okay, we read about the Ridge Home. Whoa, there's a lot to that one. Buffalo Bill's Grave and Museum. Okay. Buffalo Bill's Grave and Museum on Lookout Mountain Golden is steeped in ghost stories. stories. Sorry, I'm looking at your computer. Like, no, oh, that's just a matter. Sorry, let me start again. Buffalo Bill's Grave and Museum on Lookout Mountain in Golden is steeped in ghost stories. Some say Buffalo Bill himself haunts the area. Specifically, a cowboy resembling Buffalo Bill has been seen in the gift shop. I have been to the gift shop countless times. I grew up in the area, and I have never seen the specter myself. Ghost show. <laughs> there is a story of a woman who fell and died on the ground surrounding the grave and museum. I am not sure when the story started or if there is any basis of truth to it, but the ghost of a woman can be seen in the area. This one stinks of urban legend like the lady in white from Riverdale Road. People say souvenirs fall or fly off the shelves in the gift shops. Once again, this isn't something I've personally witnessed. I can say that the shop doesn't feel level in some places. I thought it meant fly off the shelves and saying that like, it all sells well. <laughs> uh, let's see. It may give off the funhouse feeling. Patrons may accidentally bump into the merchandise and knock it down themselves. I think the main reason Buffalo Bill's Grave and Museum gives off that creepy feeling is due to the cell towers and things on the mountains. There are reported high EMF fields, which anyone who watches Ghost Hunters knows can cause a variety of side effects, including disorientation, the feeling of something watching you, dizziness, and even hallucinations, depending on how sensitive you are. While Lookout Mountain may or may not be haunted, it is a great place to visit. The views are spectacular, and it is a great, sp and it's a great place to <clears throat> park, if you get my meaning. There are also some neat hiking trails in the area, and it's a fun escape from the city without having to wander too far. Bottom line, I don't believe... Well, okay, whatever. Don't care. You guys can... Heritage Square? That's interesting. 
Heritage Square, located in Golden, is a neat shopping village amusement park designed for families. I want to check out some, like, Denver urban legends. I mean, it's, it's Golden. It's, like, right there. So, you can always go and check it out. So, Heritage Square, located in Golden, is a neat shopping village museum, village amusement park designed for families. It's the home of the Alpine Slide and Heritage Square Music Hall. It may be also home to a ghost or two. There doesn't seem to be much solid evidence to suggest a haunting, but there are many stories. Star-crust lovers. The most popular story is of a young man falling in love with a Native American girl. Her tribe passed through the area and the man fell insanely in love. Tribe elders forbid the girl from seeing the young man. The story comes to its tragic end when the young man chases after the tribe in a horse-drawn wagon and ends up dying. It is unknown whether his death was an accident or if the story has a more sinister ending. People report hearing the sounds of a galloping of galloping hoofbeats and hearing a male's voice yelling for someone to wait. Orbs and EVPs. One of my favorite local paranormal groups investigated Heritage Square years ago, early 2000s, and used to have their findings of their investigations posted on their website. Unfortunately, they have overhauled their site and all the evidence of their old investigation was removed. I remember them having a few cool orb pictures and one disturbing EVP. It sounds like a little boy. Just thinking about it gives me chills. Spider Man. While you may not be able to catch a real ghost at a Heritage Square, you can definitely get scared. Spider Mansion is the haunted house open every October on the property. It's not the most chilling haunted house out there, but it's not shabby. Final thoughts. I believe there may be some sort of paranormal activity at Heritage Square, and I don't necessarily believe that the Native American slash Pioneer's love story is since a virgin legend made. What do you think? Uh, I don't know. We read about the Riverdale Road. Uh, search Denver okay. urban legends. So that's close to home. Like literally <laughs> close to home. Denver. Legends in Colorado. We know about the Buffalo Bill one. The these, Stanley Hotel. Ooh. These are Denver, though. I don't think there's a lot of them in Denver. Honestly. For, for those of you who don't know, uh, Stanley Hotel is where they uh, shot The Shining. Yep. De- All right. Well, let's just read The Stanley Hotel because it has some interesting history. Denver's most infamous hotel, the urban legend surrounding this 1909 built building has extended into movies. While lots of rich and famous folks have stayed at the Stanley Hotel, despite its legendary reputation for ghost sightings in many guest rooms and a grand piano in the ballroom that plays on its own, undoubtedly the one guest most influenced by his eerie experience at the Stanley is author Stephen King, who wrote The Shining shortly afterwards. While urban legends often tend to scare people away, this hotel's reputation draws people in. The Stanley Hotel plays the uncut, R-rated version of The Shining non-stop in every guest room on Channel 42. That's cool. Of course. I'm just grabbing some water. Get some water. Get some water. Hmm. There's not a lot. That kind of yeah. sucks. Not too much. I'm kind of surprised we uh, missed the uh, Stanley Hotel. Well, that, that one, seems like a no-brainer. That one's kind of obvious, though. Okay, we know about the gates of hell. Um, we know about Stanley. Hotel Colorado, Glenwood Springs. Stupid. The, it's the third bridge. Third bridge in Aurora. Anyone else planning to sleep with their lights on tonight? For oh, oh, you fucking. No, it's just a video. Yeah, I kind of don't want to. Let's just search the third bridge. Okay. Alrighty. Urban legend tells us a story of a bridge located out on the desolate prairie southeast of Denver. The bridge, or Ghost Bridge, as it is often referred to, carries County Line Road. Uh, over the dry bed of Kiowa Creek, the details of the stories are most mostly unknown to those who take the long drive at night. 
to hear the fabled sounds of the drums, horse hooves beating across the bridge, and to recite stories of death by car accident, murder, and an Indian massacre. Are these stories true? Is the area tainted forever by the blood spilling long ago? Do the sounds of drums floating upon the air tell us the story of historical death and foretell of doom yet to come? The bridge is a popular... Uh, sorry, hold on. The bridge is a popular spot for ghost hunters, thrill seekers, and teens looking for a place to party due mostly to its secluded location and accessibility. The landscape of the area is something straight out of a scary movie. A dark dirt road across the plains going over a large hill, the kind that makes you wonder where the other side is as you come over the top, dropping down to the heavily wooded banks of the dry creek bed known as Kiowa Creek. Or Kiowa. Kiowa. Uh, sorry, was, what's that book? Uh, it's uh, it's like a war book. One well, of the characters name is Kiowa. Oh, I couldn't tell you. The bridge itself is a long span of concrete and metal, the kind that if you were running across it, it would take a while to get to the end because there is no escape along the sides with its 15-foot drop down to the creek bed. When night falls, it is pitch black with just the hint of light off in the distance. The later it gets, the quieter it gets, creating a perfect time for one to listen to the sounds of far-off native drums. I'm not going to say Indian because it's stupid. The bridge that exists today is not the original bridge over Kiowa Creek. It was built in the 1970s lying just a few yards west of the remains of the original bridge, which can, which can be seen when facing the east side of the bridge, with its big wooden foundation still resting alongside the creek. The stories of the haunting at the modern bridge are even more recent, dating back to around the mid-1990s. Originally, it was tales of an Indian massacre that brought people to the banks of Kiowa Creek. Reports of screams, apparitions of Native Americans, the sound of horse hooves beating across the bridge and flashes of light are associated with this legend. Today, the legend is greater. The story of ghosts on the bridge brought about a real-life situation that may have created true ghosts when an accident occurred there in 1997 due to the reckless driving of teens. Within the last decade, reports of a young girl crying then disappearing Phantom wrecked vehicles that vanish when approached, and even cases of possession now are associated with the bridge. The popularity of the bridge continues on. Upon visiting the bridge in September 2008, Colorado ghost hunters found evidence of the fact that the bridge is still heavily visited by people of all sorts. Among that evidence has been a flash of light, no doubt dropped as someone fled the creek bed in fright. A pair of brass knuckles brought in hopes of protection from the dead. A credit card washed up by recent rains and a small toy car found near the guardrail. As if to be an eerie reminder of the bridge's past. Under the bridge were signs of old campfires, lost articles of clothing, and the scattered bones of an antelope. They're hopefully due to natural causes. After hearing the stories of the drums, we were compelled to research the bridge's history to find who and what events may have inspired this urban legend that has continued for decades. The car oh, accident. This is a long story. It is, but hey. But hey, I mean, Why not? it might get a little boring for the uh, listeners. I don't give a shit. I kind of do. <laughs> we're informing them of interesting things. By reading, we're just reading to them. That's fine. All right, fine. Uh, we'll put up the link of the post so you yeah, can read the rest. Uh, all right. Dingledorfs. Dingle Danks. Is that dick? So that's cool. I like to go visit that. Because I'm bored. Sorry, I don't know what to say. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Do you not get to, into the whole Halloween scary stuff? Not really, no. That's surprising. Why is that surprising? I don't know. Just does. 
Um, uh, uh, have you been to any like haunted houses here in Colorado? Any haunted houses? Mm-hmm. Uh, no. No, I have not. Hmm. Hmm. We should go. I'm surprised. Um, the only haunted sort of thing I've been to is a haunted, haunted corn maze. I think it was Anderson Farms. It was pretty good. Sweet. But I, I, mean, I want to go. I, I don't go to enough of them. Speaking of spooky things, we should play Until Dark sometime. Until Dawn, you mean? Uh, yeah, Until Dawn. Blah! Excuse me. The name of that game just slips my mind. Every single time. How? <laughs> I don't know. It just does. The other day was a game I just can't for the life of me remember it ever. You know what? After I watched like a play through of it, I don't think I'd be scared of it anymore. Hmm. That's just me though. I, I haven't seen the whole game, I've just seen like a part of it. Oh. Well if you can play it and I'll watch yeah. and laugh. Because you know, it's funny. Seems spooky. It is pretty. It's pretty good. Pretty spooky. Yeah, like I like, like the whole psychological aspect. Is it more of like a mystery kind of thing? Like a who done it? Kind of. Because I, I kind of want to get that game. You know what's really fun? What? Sneaking into a corn maze after it's closed. <laughs> Why is that? Because then, because normally a corn maze will have like a haunted corn maze side to it, so you can mm -hmm. go, you can go to the haunted corn maze side and go behind the scenes, like where all the actors hide and where all like the animatronics are, and mm -hmm. just be dumb. Because mm -hmm. I went a couple of years ago with Christian and his friend, and they got drunk in the corn maze. Oh, that sounds like fun. <laughs> And there's like this bus part of it, mm -hmm. and so they um, they were they just took selfies of themselves drinking beer with like the, the dead bus driver. It's funny. It's funny. And then there was, because a lot of like the rooms, that they set up in the haunted corn maze are like makeshift. So, like the walls and the roof are made out of tarp. And it had just recently snowed pretty heavily, which is why it was closed. So, like, the tarps were, like, bulged inwards from all the melted snow. Mm -hmm. And we had a knife, and we fucking, <laughs> we slit open the tarp, and uh -huh. all the water and snow came into the, into the thing. Good fucking job. And we were just trying to help. Because we didn't want it to happen, like, when they were having guests. Mm -hmm. And then there was this dead baby. In like a crib. Uh huh. An actual real Not an baby. actual dead baby. Like a doll. <laughs> we took one of the empty beer bottles and put it in its arm and left it there. <laughs> nice. Damn. And then we, we took some pumpkins from the premise. So, what have you been up to lately? Wow. What? Nothing. Nothing, nothing at all. Work. Work. Work has been worky. I got a raise that you know about already. It's sweet. It sounds nice. It is nice. We'll see how my paycheck looks like when I get it. In 20 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I get scared easily when I'm closing, because most of the time I'm just closing, and like when I am closing, I'm like, and concentrate on the dishes usually. Mm -hmm. So I'm just like, no. my face is buried in the dishes, and someone will come like, "Hey, I'm like, oh, fire!" <laughs> Are you easily scared, Dakota? Uh, not that easily scared, honestly. I'm sort of, but okay. like, I'm not as easily scared as like somebody walking up to me and being, "Hey," and be like, "Whoa!" <laughs> but for some reason, at work. Mm. I get that. I used to close up a building. I don't remember when or where. 
I just remember closing out a building and it was just me. It was like a fun time, honestly. And it was dark. It was spooky. Spooky, scary skeletons. Uh, so yeah. That was fun. That sounds fun. Did you help out with the North um, Haunted House? Or were you... No. Did, did you walk through it? No, I, I, I don't remember doing anything like that. Oh. It was good. It, uh, it was decent for, you know, being in high school. You know. What, uh, it wasn't professionally done or anything. It was done by the students, so considering that, it was pretty well done. Could it have been better? Of course. If I was yeah. helping with it. But it wasn't. Because I'm mean. Because I'm mean. God damn it, Dakota. What? What a shitty day. What a shitty fucking day. Um... What are we talking about? What do we want to talk about? I like it's... talking about spooky stuff. Yeah, but I don't. I don't watch. I'm not surrounded by much spooky stuff, so I, I don't know what to say about it. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so then instead of talking about experience, what would you like to experience? What, what would, would I be willing, like to experience? What would you be willing to do? As is the question. Um. What if I got kidnapped? Okay, we're not talking like, about legit. I mean, like a, a stage kidnapping. Oh. That'd be kind of silly. Check out what kind of hijinks we're up to today. I've seen that kind of Dakota stuff. Dakota gets fucking kidnapped. <laughs> <laughs> there's no there's no way that I'd be able to keep a straight face if I was part of it, so there's no way I would do it. There's actually a haunted house. You have to sign a waiver to get in. Oh, yeah, have, that one. Have you heard about spooky. it? Spooky. Yeah, I've heard about it. Dude. And, like, hardly anybody really makes it through. Yeah, like, I don't think anybody has made it through the entire thing. I honestly feel like I might be able to. You think so? Yeah, because um, I, I, keep, I keep a grip on myself. Is it just, I think I'd be able to, too, just because I know that it's all fake. Yeah. It's, well, not it's... fake, but, like, they can't go beyond a certain point. Mm-hmm. So I know that I won't die. Just the, yeah, I just know that I'll be sick, really. Then again, you do have to sign a waiver. Then again. <laughs> Other than all this psychological torment, I'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Besides shitting my pants for the next five days, I'll be all right. Do you watch scary movies? Do I watch scary? No, not really. Um, I've just never gotten into them. And I've kind of been avoiding them, like, as of late, because, like, scary movies just don't seem that good, I guess. Like, well, it seems like a teenager, teenage girl, like, bandwagon kind of thing now. Oh, I see. I understand that. Which is like, hey, check it out, uh, everybody else. It's so spooky, scary. And it's like... Did I show you Killer like Clowns from Outer Space? Killer Clowns from... I've never seen that. I... I haven't watched many scary movies. We're going to watch that movie. Okay. We should watch it now. What are the scary movies that I've seen? Um, I've seen a lot. I've seen a shit ton. I, I'm just not interested in that, I guess. I don't know. What are the scary movies that I've seen? I've seen Insidious. How would you like it? How would you like the Darth Maul demon? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought, it, I thought that was really silly. I watched that with Steven, so you can imagine, I can imagine. how that went. Yeah. Um, it, it was meh. It was meh. Meh. It was too spooky. They could have done a better job. They could have, yeah. With the demon design. Because as yeah. soon as I saw the demon, I'm like, this is fucking clown. What is Darth Maul doing <laughs> in Insidious? What is your lightsaber, this Maul? fucking guy right here. This fucking guy. And the only part that'll maybe make you freak out is the jump scare. Yeah, the one jump the scare. The one jump scare where it pans to the dude and the dude's talking and it pans away from him and it pans back to him and the demon's behind him trying to make a spooky face. Yeah, that, there was one jump scare that I was like, ah, fuck. I was like, ah, I was like, oh, god damn it. Fucking jump scare. God damn it, Maul. Yeah. God damn it, Darth. Fucking jump scare. 
Uh, what's spooky scary? Have you seen Jeepers Creeper? But Jeepers I've Creepers? seen it a long time ago when I was a tiny little kid. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, guess I never really thought anything of it. I don't mm-hmm. remember much from it. Okay. Uh, I've seen a couple of the Friday the 13th. Which ones? Uh, the first couple ones. I think I've seen. Like the first two? I, th- I think I've seen the first three. Okay. I think they're pretty good. I yeah, think like they're them. well filmed. They're good like, yeah. overall movies. Yeah, I, I like them. I think they're pretty good. And of course, back in the day, that would make people shit their pants. Mm-hmm. That's another big wish of mine, to go back in time to a point where horror movies were just becoming a thing. Yeah. And just sit, I feel like and sit in the movie theaters with all the people that have no uh-huh. idea what's about to happen. And then watch them shit themselves. Oh That'd my god, that would be great. Yeah, I don't know. It just seems like scary movies today are just kind of stale. Like, I think Paranormal Activity just well, it's just really dumb. Paranormal Activity Seven or something. <laughs> Jesus, like Christ. a song. They they're trying to do a whole like Friday the Thirteenth and uh-huh. the Elm Street thing. But it's not that scary at all. No. That's it's what just... happened to them, to those film franchises, is they did it too many times and people uh-huh. got sick of it. Uh-huh. Wasn't there a fucking Friday the thirteenth on the moon or something? That was Freddy versus No, it was it was it was Jason X. That's what it was. Jason X, where he's on the fucking moon. Oh they were like in a in a space station. How the how how did he get on the moon? They weren't on the moon. They never ended up on the moon. Oh. But it was in space. Okay. <laughs> In a space station. And he gets the end of, end of fucking space. blown apart by this freaking android chick. Uh-huh. And, like, obviously he's dead. There's no way he's coming back from it. Because literally the entire, like, upper half of his torso is blown away by a gun. Uh-huh. So, okay, let me, let me describe the scene. So, Jason is walking towards the android, like, with his machete. Like, oh, I'm gonna fucking kill you, obviously. And he gets shot, and he gets blown, because it's like a super high caliber shotgun, for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. So he gets blown back onto this medical table, uh-huh. and he gets up again, and he gets shot again. He gets up again, and he gets shot Even again. Even though there's no logical reason his muscles would still work. Right, yeah. like his entire body is torn apart, but because it's Jason, you know. Because he's a ghosty man. And he gets up again, and then finally, like, he blows off his in, like the entirety of his skull. Mm-hmm. Like, there's, like, a like, tiny little sliver left of it. And he falls down, and he's technically dead. But because the medical table that he landed on was, like, a nanobot medical table, mm-hmm. so it activates and reconstructs his body. What the fuck? Come on, man. And he comes back even stronger and then whoops on the android and, like, pulls her head off. But the android, of course, is still alive, so he's mm-hmm. sitting, she's sitting there talking to him with her head torn off. It's pretty funny. It's <laughs> so stupid. Uh, I've seen, you, um, hmm. I've seen Halloween, I've seen like the remake of Halloween, I think. I've seen that one, surprisingly. Yeah, I, 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 I've seen a couple of Halloweens, I think, I think they're okay. Yeah. I think the scariest movie by concept is, uh, A Nightmare on Elm Street. Oh, yeah. By concept, that's, like, so much scarier than, like, everything else. Because there's nothing you could do. Yeah. Cool. It's like, you go to sleep, dead. <laughs> uh, like, unless you know what you're doing. I mean, yeah. And you're, like, like a super um, lucid dreamer that knows exactly how to control our dreams and uh-huh. has been doing it for years, you're basically fucked. Yeah. Like, I, I, I was thinking about it, like, literally today, I think. I was like, uh, Jace, Freddy, or Jason? I was like... I like Jason's character, like, I like his design better, mm-hmm. but Freddy is just far more scarier by concept, mm-hmm. because he could just kill you anytime. Right. <laughs> and, of course, they played it very well. Did you ever see Freddy vs. Jason? I've seen it a long time ago. I don't remember so much about it. I remember it being... I, it was... I remember the end of it, I was like, wow, that's really fucking stupid. <laughs> Well, I, and I'm sure most people have seen it, and I thought it was funny. I thought <laughs> it was hilarious. I didn't find it scary at all. Yeah, I remember a couple things from it. I was like, this is so fucking dumb. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was something else. But it was what everybody wanted at the time. 
Because everybody had seen all of Friday the 13th and all of Nightmare on Elm Streets. And they're like, well, what happened? And they're like, and Hollywood was like, here's what God we're damn it. Yeah. And we're like, oh shit. <laughs> and it was, it was funny. So many movies that like I really want to watch. Because I, I don't watch many movies. Like at all. Uh, like I've never really seen Aliens or Alien. The Alien whatever. franchise? Yeah. I've never really, I've never seen The Shining. I think I would be really into it. Uh, I've only seen Terminator 2. I thought it was pretty great. Terminator okay. 2. Oh, Termi- Sorry, I was thinking of Predator 2. Oh, no. Terminator 2 is pretty fucking awesome. Yeah. I want to see the first one. Um, I haven't seen Predator. Yeah, there's a lot of movies. I'm watch. surprised. Predator is awesome. Is it? That's I hilarious. It. Oh, I think I've seen like a little bit of it. I don't remember. That's anything. where the get to the chopper comes get from. Get to the chopper. Don't you mean uh, Terminator? No, it's Predator. It comes from Predator. Wow, wow. Oh. Get to the chopper. <laughs> yeah, I want to see Terminator One. And I saw that. I saw Terminator One too a long time ago. Mm-hmm. I would like to rewatch them. You know what I haven't watched? The Back to the Future 3. That one was... I I've know. seen the first two. I think the second one is fucking amazing. Oh, yeah. The second, second one, one is so smart. good. So smart. <laughs> I'm surprised. I, like, I'm surprised they were able to, like... They were able to be like, this is what the 80s is going to look like to people from 2015. <laughs> and they actually, like, nailed it, like, spot on. It was... Oh, man, it's so fun. Like, that kind of foresight is just... The third one kind of stands on its own. Does it? Yeah. It's like you just watch it out of order. No. Not really. It, it's, it starts off at the end of the second one, mm-hmm. but it, it's not connected to the first or second one in like storyline. Because mm-hmm. the first and second one, they you know they came back through those timelines. Mm-hmm. Like, but in the third one... They stay in one timeline. Third one seemed so, always, always seemed really like weird because it was like you know, all western. It was all yeah. western, and it stayed yeah. in that one timeline and it didn't go back to the original timeline to the end of the movie, mm-hmm. which is where it differs from the first and the second because the first and the second interweave between the two. Mm-hmm. But it's still good. I like it. It was entertaining, funny. Yeah. Did you see Jaws? Have you seen Jaws? I've s- actually, no, I haven't. Actually, you know, my uncle, he actually did the voiceover for the trailer of Jaws. You told me about that. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, I'm surprised I've never seen it. You think because of that, I haven't seen it. But I can't believe you haven't seen Jaws. I've not seen it. <laughs> I think I may, may have seen part of it. But we have to watch that too. We have to watch that too. God damn it. We might just end the podcast here. And we, start we're just going to start movies. watching a ton of movies. And then come back. I'm going to watch that. I'm going to watch Back to the Future 2. You know what we should do? We should pause right now. <laughs> watch some Killer Clowns from Outer Space. And then keep going on the podcast just to see how you feel about it. Uh, okay. Do you want to do that? Sure. Okay. Sure. We'll be back. We're going to pause now. We're going to do that. Uh, this is, I'm not even, how long have we been recording? I don't know. If it's been a while, we might just end it. I feel like it has. I feel like it's been a long time. It's been an hour and four minutes. Uh, I think that's good. All right, yeah. Okay. The next podcast. Well, next podcast, we're going to start talking about killer, creepy, killer, killer clowns, clowns from outer space. Well, we'll probably, space man. I'm probably going to make him watch uh, Predator and Jaws because... Fuck yeah. Because fuck yeah. America. Love you guys.